So today we have a webinar for you. Uh, it's part of the Smart Nation Together series brought to you by the Smart Nation and Digital Government Office. So, you know, today we are covering um, the very important and very timely topic of cybersecurity. And what we have for you today is a sharing um, from our colleagues at the Cybersecurity Agency of Singapore on the broad uh, uh, giving you a broad overview of the cybersecurity landscape and also some of the workforce initiatives that we have. Um, and also a very interesting panel discussion by some industry experts in cybersecurity who will be you know, um, sharing their insights on some of the myths in the world of cybersecurity. Um, so today we have um, um, our speakers, Simon from CSA, uh, Dutch from iSprint, Matthias from Momentum Z, and Emil from Red Alpha Cybersecurity. And we are very excited and happy to have them as part of today's uh, webinar. So um, for more information about our free webinars, do check out the link that I'll be pasting in the chat. Um, and if you have any questions, please do feel free to type inside the Q&A box and we will address them when we can. Um, so without further ado, I will pass on the time to Simon Lam from um, Cybersecurity Agency of Singapore. Thank you. Hi, thank you very much. Uh, thank you everyone for joining this webinar. Um, Yeah, sorry for that. So uh, what I hope to do uh, for the next couple of minutes is really to uh, uh, go through a broad introduction to the cybersecurity landscape and what that CSA and what are the, uh, uh, some of the initiatives we have um, in terms of workforce uh, uh, capability development, right? So about CSA, uh, we were established in uh, 2015. Uh, we are under the uh, we're part of the Prime Minister's office, but uh, we're managed by the Ministry of Communications and uh, Information. So our mission is very simple: to keep our cyberspace safe and secure, because it underpins our national security. Uh, and what we want to do is uh, keep it safe to power a digital economy, and also to protect our digital uh, way of life. All right. So our vision in CSA is really to build a trusted and resilient cyberspace that allows Singapore to capture the benefits of a more connected world. So with that in mind, um, uh, we understand at CSA that a secure cyberspace is important because it underpins our national security and it powers a digital economy and it protects our digital way of life. So as a result, we have uh, come up with an updated uh, cybersecurity strategy that was released uh, in October uh, 2021. And with this uh, new updated uh, strategy, uh, what happened is that we've introduced uh, uh, three vertical pillars, strategic pillars, but uh, we updated this uh, strategy to include two horizontal uh, uh, pillars, as you can see. All right. And uh, I'm working with the ecosystem development division. And uh, what we do is really look at these two foundational enablers, which we'll talk a little bit more uh, in the subsequent slides later. So just to run through some of the strategic pillars, okay, for one, we want to build a resilient uh, um, infrastructure. And what that means is to ensure that the systems that we have in the government are secure and resilient, and also to work with our critical infrastructure uh, operators, right, to make sure that their systems are secure and resilient as well, right? Because with this, we can then safeguard uh, the entities and all the systems that are of important to, to, to our public and to the citizens of Singapore, right? What we do want to see is uh, our nation power system grid going down, you know, or, or, or water systems being contaminated. So it's important that um, we keep this protected as well as all other related government systems. The second strategic pillar is really enabling a safer cyberspace as uh, more things get digitized, as we uh, get more uh, entrenched in the digital economy, it's very important we secure our digital infrastructure, our devices that we use, the applications that we use that power our digital economy. Okay, and so we have a whole uh, suite of activities that goes around safeguarding those uh, activities and safeguarding cyberspace. And then, of course, we want to empower our population to be cyber savvy as well. 
right? So that's why we run programs to keep uh, our students uh, updated on what's happening uh, in terms of scams, uh, in terms of uh, uh, things like that, yeah? Now, the third uh, strategic pillar is international uh, relations and international power, uh, partnerships. Uh, cyber threats are international and cross-border in nature, as well known by now. If you look at what's happening um, uh, globally and what's happening in Russia and Ukraine, you can see that there are spillover uh, effects that could happen when there are significant cyber attacks. So it's very important that Singapore, as a young nation, a small nation, work together with international partners Right, to ensure that there are some uh, long-term rules-based uh, uh, system in place to ensure that uh, uh, proper policies and mechanisms are there to raise the global baseline for cybersecurity. Right? So things like combating cyber crimes, uh, international cyber threats, uh, that's where CSA comes in as well. All right, so let's look at the two foundational uh, enablers that uh, I mentioned before. And we, uh, and me, uh, as part of the ecosystem division, we are very focused on these two enablers, right? The first enabler is really to develop uh, vibrant cyber security ecosystems, okay? So this ecosystem is important because it lays the foundation of protecting Singapore from cyber threats in the longer term. And what it, also helps to do is to ensure that we strengthen Singapore's position as a trusted global business hub and provide economic opportunities for Singaporeans and Singapore-based companies, right? So we, one thing is developing capabilities. The other one is uh, helping our co companies develop innovative world-class products and then helping them bring these products to the global market, right? So that's what we uh, want to do here at CSA when we talk about developing a vibrant cybersecurity ecosystem. Now, the second foundational enabler, of course, is people. Okay, we might have the best technology, the, the greatest ideas and things like that, but we need people to make those things happen. All right, so the second enabler is really to grow a robust uh, cyber talent pipeline. And so here we are playing the role to help Singaporeans uh, upgrade the, their skill sets, uh, to help people reskill if needed uh, into the cybersecurity domain, right? So this is a uh, so the whole idea is to support uh, youth, women, and mid-career professionals like yourself in pursuing a cybersecurity career, and to help you reskill and upskill, and also provide a uh, a community, right? To to bring different associations together to create a community where. Uh, it's dynamic and where you feel a part of and where you can learn from one another. Okay, so that's the other second, uh, that's the uh, second foundational enabler. Okay, so why it matters is because cybersecurity is both a uh, imperative and an opportunity and a vibrant uh, cybersecurity ecosystem provides a sustainable source of expertise and solutions to ensure that Singapore's cyberspace is trusted and secure. And of course, cybersecurity is a growing industry as we all know, and it creates many uh, good jobs and economic opportunities for all Singaporeans. Um, so what we are doing, uh, so there's two areas that we focus on. Uh, one area is called manpower development, where we have different programs in place uh, to, again, right, what we talked about to get people interested, excited about being in the cybersecurity industry uh, and to uh, uh, help them along the way to build up the skill sets uh, to participate in this, uh, in this ecosystem. And then of course, the other thing is industry development, uh, where we have working with industry, we come up with new ideas, new concepts, new products, new services uh, to, to market and to, uh, and to of course, uh, build advanced skill sets in cybersecurity as well. Yeah. Okay, so why is it important uh, to have a vibrant cybersecurity ecosystem? Like I said, there is a global shortage of cybersecurity professionals uh, in, in Singapore and everywhere else. Uh, as you can see, APEC itself, right? There's almost a 2 million uh, shortage of uh, uh, people in cybersecurity. And there's growing demands in this space, right? Um, areas where, areas of... Um, Shortage in cybersecurity skill sets include things like threat and vulnerability assessment, 
security management and uh, incident and crisis management. Okay. So as uh, as CSA, we are we are keen to uh, get more and more people into cybersecurity and get more people into these uh, growing areas as well. So if you look at the cybersecurity talent pipeline, right? So we look at look at holistically. Okay, so um, some key demographics that we are focused on include pre-tertiary students. Okay, so we have programs reaching out to. Uh, uh, pre-tertiary students to get them excited and to start exploring cybersecurity uh, uh, domains and cybersecurity knowledge. And then we run programs to help build them, help build their skill sets, as well as to identify uh, um, uh, talented individuals that we can bring on board and do further training and mentoring. Uh, then, of course, uh, uh, the other pipeline of talent is the tertiary students and national servicemen. Again, we want them to uh, pick up cybersecurity courses in universities. We want to make sure that their skill sets are uh, industry oriented, right? And same as those uh, going to NS, we want to uh, build a pipeline of uh, cybersecurity talent while they are in national service as well. And then of course, once they graduate, right? They're now part of the workforce. What we hope to do is to continue to um, give them opportunities to learn uh, and upgrade their skill sets. Uh, to go into training, to learn more advanced uh, 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 skills, as well as to encourage them to continuously upskill their, their knowledge. Yeah. So some of the ways we do this is we secure top talents through scholarships, right? So we have different scholarships uh, targeting students who are, uh, who are going to universities and, and picking up cybersecurity as, a, as, a, as the uh, cost of choice. And then, of course, we work with industry as well to have uh, scholarships where students can be placed in industry and they can gain more experience in, in different cybersecurity roles. Okay. So in terms of skills, we work very closely with uh, SSG, right? So we identify what are the skill sets required. And that means we look at work with the cybersecurity sector to look at different pathways, what kind of roles and what kind of occupations are there in cybersecurity, what kind of skills, existing skills can fit into cybersecurity, and what are the emerging skills that are needed in cybersecurity. And then, of course, coming up with different uh, training programs, right, for individuals to skill up and, uh, and, and, and be better at what uh, they are doing. Okay, so... With this uh, skills framework, then individuals can make informed decisions about how they want to move in their career, what kind of skill sets they want to learn. Employers can obviously design uh, uh, management frameworks, HR management frameworks and talent development plans using the skills framework. And of course, our training partners can then focus on developing content and uh, curriculum that's, that's helpful to help them upskill and reskill. Right, so this is the whole of government effort, right? So we work with IMDA, we work with Skills Future, we work at uh, Ministry of Education, we come up for a skills framework such as this for cybersecurity. What are job roles? And for each job roles, what are kind of skill sets are needed? And again, this is done together with industry. And so we want to make sure that the skills uh, and the roles are relevant to, to industry as well. And so this framework, therefore, uh, it's important that it's validated by employers, unions, profession bodies, and academia because all four uh, parties have a role to play in ensuring that we continue to grow our cybersecurity uh, talent pipeline. Okay, so this is something that we'll come up with. Like uh, if somebody wants to perform the job role of a cyber risk analysis analyst, uh, what does his work uh, contain? What uh, entails, sorry, what work functions does he need to do, what key tasks that he needs to uh, perform. And so based on that, we come up with all the technical skills and competencies that are required and at what level, right? So this is uh, an example of a set of skills um, for a cyber risk analyst. And of course, we have all these different, uh, we call that skill sets for different roles as well. Okay, so for example, um, CSA launched the uh, Operational Technology or OT Cybersecurity Master Plan in 2019. And then we had to quickly 
work together all right, with our industry partners, with academia, with the unions and with industry to come up with a skills framework for people who have to perform this role and this function uh, in the OT cybersecurity space. Okay, so you can see that uh, there are different job roles and within each job role, we come up with different skills that's required. Uh, and then what are the training that they need to do to uh, get, get training in those skill sets, right? All right, so as I, as I mentioned earlier, part of our strategy is definitely to work with um, our IHLs, okay, to ensure that uh, um, they come up with programs such as specialist diplomas for uh, working adults to make sure that the quality and the standards of those uh, uh, diplomas, right, are in line with what industry requires or in line with what we think uh, cybersecurity demands are, okay, so, uh, and so we, as CSA, we have uh, a fair amount of discussion and inputs to some of these uh, diplomas and programs that uh, the IHLs come up with. Okay. All right, so under uh, uh, CSA, we have this big umbrella called the SG Cyber Talent. Okay, it's a new, it's a national in initiative uh, to nurture talented cyber and security enthusiasts from a young age and also by helping cybersecurity professionals that are in industry to deepen their skills. Okay, so under the cyber uh, SG, uh, sorry, under the SG Cyber Talent Program, we have um, sub programs such as the SG Cyber Youth, uh, the CSA Cybersecurity Development Program, uh, Professional and Conversion Development Programs. We also have programs for uh, SG Cyber Women, uh, SG Cyber Leaders. Okay, so the target, right, is to really uh, use this SG Cyber Talent Initiative to, again, to really uh, capture um, young students to get them excited about uh, cybersecurity. And as they, as they move up and they, they will choose cybersecurity as a, a course in, the, in polytechnic or in university. And as they graduate, we want to con continue to engage them to make sure that they grow their skill sets and as they move up the corporate ladder, and as they, we want them to groom them to be the next generation of SG cyber leaders, all right? And so, if, and then we have, we understand that there's different needs, uh, uh, different needs. So that's why we also have uh, programs for SG cyber women. And also we also have SG cyber educators because we believe that uh, they're very important in helping uh, CSA, um, get uh, young, young people excited about uh, cybersecurity, right? So these are some of the programs we, we run the SG Cyber Talent Initiative. All right, so under professional conversion and development programs, uh, CSA has worked uh, together with our industry partners with different agencies to come up with a whole suite of uh, programs to help uh, professionals to upskill or reskill, all right, uh, into cybersecurity. Okay, so for instance, we have our uh, Cybersecurity Associates and Technology Program, CSET. Okay, and in this program, uh, we work with industry partners to craft out uh, training uh, for individuals. And then we, we get these individuals into these companies, the companies will train them. And then once the training is done, uh, to give them uh, uh, employment, right, in the area of cybersecurity within the company. Right. We also uh, work with uh, government agencies to come up with the uh, uh, Tech Skills Accelerator Program, TISA. So again, this program helps to uh, get people uh, trained up in cybersecurity, right? and then uh, deploy them into, into, into our partner companies uh, to, to then uh, get some, to get uh, jobs in cybersecurity as well. And, uh, in terms of uh, development programs, we have CITREP, us. So again, we, one of the key things we want to do is to make sure that even though you're now in the cybersecurity uh, workforce, we want you to constantly upgrade or we want you to constantly learn new skills. And so therefore we have this CITREP plus program where you can go for courses and training and get certified uh, and subsidized uh, rates. And of course, within uh, CSA itself, under our CSA Academy, uh, we have this Cybersecurity Professional Development Program. 
Um, the objective is really to groom uh, recent graduates or working professionals uh, to be in the cybersecurity uh, domain within the government sector so that they can co contribute to Singapore's economy and digital uh, uh, aspirations. Okay, so it's a three month uh, classroom training program where it goes through a whole suite of uh, industry certified and industry uh, curated uh, training, such as uh, CCNA from Cisco or the certified ethical hacker from EC Council uh, and a master's program, a module master's program of SUTD, right? So after that, they, they get their certifications, uh, different cybersecurity certifications. They then go for a 15 month on-job training where they get hands-on experience in working in one of the four CSA's operational and technical divisions, whether it's incident response, threat monitoring, uh, building new cybersecurity capabilities and, and the like. All right. So another part of our uh, engagement with the cybersecurity industry is really to um, develop our next uh, generation of uh, as cyber leaders. Okay. So what this program does wants to do is to really to strengthen knowledge, leadership, and networks of uh, Singapore's current and upcoming generation of cybersecurity leaders, so that they'll be effective and ready. Uh, to take on leadership roles in cybersecurity within the organizations, right? So this is uh, what we do. So there's strategic and leadership training, there are study trips to learn best practices, and we're trying to build communities where these leaders can come together to share ideas, to discuss uh, topics of interest, uh, and, to, and, to, and to learn together. And then, like what I said, we have, do have... Uh, 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 a program uh, under SG Cyber Talent for, S, uh, uh, for women. Okay, so we understand diversity is important. And therefore, uh, obviously one area of talent that we need to uh, engage with are, are the ladies. And so we, uh, we came up with this program uh, to, to have different things happening, such as uh, events, uh, capture the flag, competition for girls, uh, mentorship programs for ladies, Right, so that uh, we get more women participating in, in cybersecurity, as well as uh, we have a broad, um, broad diversity, all right, of talent in the cybersecurity uh, uh, industry as well. And of course, uh, young people, like what I mentioned, it's, it's important to uh, engage them when they're young. So we do have uh, programs that uh, we run. Uh, for our uh, youth, um, they could be boot camps, they could be webinars, they could be uh, capture the flag competition and think, uh, mentoring sessions, right? Where all these young people can get excited, can explore uh, the uh, areas of cybersecurity and pick up cybersecurity skills as well. Yeah. And now, of course, at the end of the day, what we want hope to do is from the Cyber Youth Program, we want to uh, pick the best of the best and then groom these young people for, uh, to represent Singapore in uh, overseas uh, cybersecurity competitions. Okay, so we have this program called uh, the SG Cyber Olympians, where a, uh, a, a group of, 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 of young people in Singapore uh, are, are selected, right? And they will go through like special training, overseas competition, uh, specific mentorships by the cybersecurity community and what they do is every other few months they'll come together to spar with one another to play capture the flag and do different competitions so that they can con continue to learn new skills and uh, uh, deepen their skill set as well. And of course uh, the Cy SG Cyber Educators uh, program again we use this program to reach out to principals and teachers and career counselors and the like um, to uh, share with them um, insights from uh, the cybersecurity industry as well as what kind of opportunities are there in, in cybersecurity as well, right? So again, to use this as a platform to, to engage uh, uh, our kids, our young people, uh, so that they will consider cybersecurity as a career. So of course, not forgetting, as I mentioned, the uh, community is very important. Uh, ecosystem is very important. And so therefore, CSA has active engagements with 
credible cybersecurity uh, organizations such as AISP, uh, SCS, ISC Square, and ISACA. So we work with them closely to uh, professionalize the workforce, for example, to develop communities of practice where people can come together to share ideas uh, and to also use this uh, industry associations to help our, our cybersecurity uh, workforce to upgrade their skill sets, to improve their knowledge uh, and, and, and deepen their, their, their areas of expertise. All right? So we have regular seminars. We actively participate in them as well all right? so that uh, uh, we work with them to, to really not just get people into the industry, but once they're in, in the industry to continue to excite them and get them and help them in their career development. Yeah. And of course, we recognize this using our Cybersecurity Awards platform, which is held every year. Uh, we recognize all the hard work that all our industry partners, our associations, our agencies all put in uh, to make the cybersecurity ecosystem happen. In, in Singapore because it's important, like I shared earlier. All right, so this is, uh, I've come to the uh, last slide. So this is the um, URL that you can go to um, uh, or the QR code that you can scan where you can find more information and more updates about the different programs that we have, uh, whether it's in the youth space or whether it's in career uh, conversion programs or whether it's in career development programs. Okay, so I've come to the end of my presentation and I'll hand over this time to uh, Simon Ng, my colleague from CSA, who will take over the panel discussions. So thank you very much uh, and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you. Thanks, Simon. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Simon and I were sitting um, uh, in uh, neighboring cubicles in the office. Yeah, right. Yeah, so um, thank you everybody for joining us this afternoon. Yeah, uh, so I'm very, very privileged right, to have um, three very um, good panelists with me today to discuss about some of the myths you know, that we come across about cybersecurity. So uh, instead of um, just going through you know, PowerPoint after PowerPoint, we want this to be more lively, more interactive. So feel free to um, key in your question in the um, Q&A chat box. All right. Um, so if you don't mind, um, let's start with one of the myths that I always hear. Um, that you know when we do this kind of webinar, when we talk to people, whether it's um um uh, uh ICT pro professionals, men on the street, students, um so on and so forth. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, one of the myth was that hey, cybersecurity are uh, very very technical one, very difficult to go in. All right. So I'm gonna throw this to my um panelists to ask to uh, answer this myth. Okay. So I think I'll go via alphabetical order. I'm gonna ask um Dutch first. Okay, um, Dutch is the founder for iSprint. Yeah, he has been in the industry for 20 plus years, you know, involved in the cybersecurity and um, Infocom for what, 20 plus years, what, in and also doing Asia Pack work, all right? Yeah, yeah. So, Dutch, come, share with us. Uh, if someone walk up to you and say, that, hey, cybersecurity, yeah, very difficult, no, very technical, very hard, what would your response be? Oh, Dutch, you're muted. Yeah. Yeah, can you hope that you can hear me? Uh, good afternoon to all and all the attendees today. Yeah, there's a lot of myth. I think myself also heard about that. There's a lot of time. I think the answer, right, just to share, right, is uh, it depends on what job role a person uh, is assuming. That's it. For, for just for example, right, cybersecurity is an end-to-end -end business. Uh, you cannot say, oh, is, is it just uh, hacking or is it just, you know, how is it for how to protect it, you know, or defend it, right? So it's not like COVID. The next is antidote or remedy. It's not how we're we going to live with COVID. Similar to cybersecurity. It's like it's a vast of field with different job roles in cybersecurity, and the ed educational requirement varies. Uh, it will be faster for someone with the techno uh, technical background to blend into the workforce, and the technical skill can be transferable to the cybersecurity field. The person can supplement their skill with more specific cybersecurity skill through taking up courses and training. I believe some of the question was being asked, right? Some uh, specific skill such as uh, risk assessment management is, is not technical or, or threat risk impact for an organization. Uh, authentication, asserting a user identity and how to do it. Information system, how information is collected 
processed, stored, and distributed in out of the organization. Talk also about digital forensics to find malicious activities on the network, of course, and some coding. So it's just not about hacking. It's just not about coding. It's a wide span of area that you can focus on. Um, it is also possible for non-technical people to get into a cybersecurity field. If you have willingness and desire to learn how technology works, there are service fields in the cybersecurity that do not focus on solving technical problems. Uh, for instance, like more human focused problem that require softer skills, such as privacy, security awareness and training, and governance, security communication, or cyber law and ethic. Of course, for those who want to get into technical role, then you need to put extra effort in the goal of courses that just, uh, I think, I, be, I believe that Simon have uh, shared just now, have a lot of courses that to acquire some technical skill, such like Python, JavaScript in the programming area. So just putting the skill, technical skill aside, we can to um, the employer like myself, hiring people, what we value most will be the candidate attitude, the willingness to learn new things, put good effort and time to build up knowledge and skill in cybersecurity. We also look at soft skill, such as their management skill in people management, projects, timeline, problem solving, communication, logical reasoning. For the technical part, definitely programming uh, will help to uh, newbies to transit into cybersecurity career, like WSG, Career Conversion Program, CCP in short, that seek for reskill Singaporean to allow them to develop new capability to take on jobs in growth area or redesign jobs role. Just this is what uh, I want to share. It's just a myth, don't worry. If we come here to learn about cybersecurity, if you want to get out a simple job, go and sell iPhone. We come here, cybersecurity, to solve problems. Back to you, Simon. Thanks, thanks. So in a way, I think, you know, if uh, I'm just thinking if uh, I, I, I was, uh, if I may summarize what Touch was trying to say, yeah, there's a wide variety, right? Those that are very, very technical, but those that need maybe less technical skills, but perhaps um, others, uh, uh, generic skills are more important, like project management, risk, so and so forth. Okay, or, okay. Or, or logical uh, uh, reasoning, you know. Oh, <laughs> logical reasoning and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thanks, thanks. Um, don't mind, let me move on to Emil first. Yeah, Emil is the uh, Chief Operating Officer for Red Alpha, right? And they're in daily involved in training. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so he has also been um, uh, uh, receiving some award from um, uh, uh, for Cybersecurity Award through the years and stuff like that. So Emil, um, because I also saw some questions people ask, uh, hey, okay, now I know that there might be um, less technical skills, no wide variety, right? Um, so in terms of training, in, I want to join cybersecurity. What would you recommend? Where do I where do I start? And in fact, one very interesting question now. Uh, some people are, hey, got minimum age or not? Got maximum age or not? <laughs> what do you think? Okay. Well, that's quite actually a loaded question. There's like a couple of questions in there. Uh, I think let's uh okay, let's 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 try to let's try to uh answer them separately, yeah. Uh. I think uh first thing first um regarding the myth regarding the myth whether cybersecurity is it a highly technical and specialized field, um I think personally I think it's uh, we can't run away from it um I think it's not hundred percent a myth uh, there are quite a lot of truth behind it um the thing is whether uh, what's the definition of technical? I mean, when you say it's technical, everyone's in their mindset, you know, they, they, or in their mind's eye, they actually think of various different scenarios. It could be like, you know, a guy with a hoodie on computers all the time, or people who understand uh, technology, right? Um, in some way, I mean, it's, cybersecurity is not just about focusing everything just on computers. It's not just about codes. It's not just for geeks. That's for sure, right? But it is, I, I for myself, I, I do believe it is a technical field that because at the end of the day, we are doing cybersecurity and the cyber bit is technical, right? It is technology at the end of the day. We are providing, uh, we are um, doing security in a technical field, right? And I do believe also it is a specialized field, right? Uh, you, need, you do need quite a lot of knowledge and in order to impart a lot of, of skills onto this 
onto this field. So um, at the end of the day, I mean, um, yeah, so I, in terms of myth, I, I think we can't run away that it is a specialized field, uh, not, but it's not just for technical people, it's not just for geeks. Um, but in terms of your day-to-day -day role, right, um, how technical it goes, Right, that would then depends on the day-to-day -day role. I think Dutch mentioned uh, earlier. I think he summarized the whole situation very well. I think all in all, you can see like a big, uh, two big circles. Right, one is you need to understand this field, this industry you are working on. If you can't understand computers, you can't understand servers, you can't understand networks, you don't understand how the internet works, you don't understand how you know uh, how um, how bits and bytes everything everything works. You can't secure it. Right, but the, but just understanding all these things is not enough because we will need all the other skills to be able to piece all this information together to secure it. And when we say security, right? Security means different things to everyone, right? Security needs to have a context, right? So in order to secure something, you need, that's when all your soft skills will start coming in, your analytic skills, your risk analysis skills, and all these will start coming in. But with just these soft skills, without understanding technology is very hard, right? So that needs to be um, this, this convergence, right? So, but cybersecurity is a very big, it's a very big field. I think a lot of people who actually try to get into cybersecurity, they always get lost, right? It's like, oh my God, it's such a big field. Where do I get started, right? Um, it is true. Actually, all of us here, I'm sure like Dutch and, and Matthias, or even Simon, you'll agree with me. All of us are none the wiser. We probably know about 10% of what is going on. But the thing is, we are all sharing amongst each other. It's like, what do you think? And we always bounce off ideas because security is always evolving, right? Um, the way we use technology is evolving. Attackers are evolving. Therefore, we constantly, it's a constant changing field. It's not that, you know, I just read one book and ta-da, I'm a security practitioner or I'm a security professional. It's, it's, it's this constant evolution. Cybersecurity is very different five years ago. Technology is because technology is different five years ago. It's not just technology, it's people, how people use technology, how technology is used in life five years ago. It's different. And therefore security will just ever uh, keep changing. So um, the, my usual advice to people who get, get into it is um, try to, you know, you need to first really understand that you, you do need to spend time to understand the technology point of, of things. If you're, because if you don't do that, Right. No matter how much soft skills you have, right, you can have. You can say that. Oh, I, I, I really like this field. I, I can, um, I, I, uh, I, I can do project management. I, I have an analytical mind. But if you cannot translate that into using some, uh, you, you can't. You don't have a technical know how to translate value, right? At the end of the day, it's, it's you are not hundred percent doing security at the, at the end of the day. So you do need to spend time, uh, to pick up some um, technology uh know how, and. Um, of course, is again, it's impossible to know everything, but at least get started, get curious, really understand the technology. Um, I think one, one, one big uh, for for Ray Alpha, uh, my my real Ray Alpha, I talk to a lot of people because uh, we are out there trying to recruit and identify good people uh, who uh, who have the knack or become uh, future cybersecurity elites. So when um, Quite a lot of people we interview, they have they have this mindset that technology is just I just need to learn this software, I just need to learn certain kind of book, and then I'm I'm done, right? And and we realize that they they heard about certain technology, but they don't really fully understand. I think that is a very uh that's a very dangerous route uh that we are going into uh for for some people, um because at the end of the day, if you don't understand fully, again you don't fully understand technology, alright, um. As time goes, as technology evolves, we will be always starting to get the uh, lag behind, right? So when you get into trying to understand security, always have an open mind, have a curious mind, have a critical mind, thinking like, why am I learning this, right? What is this? Uh, what exactly is this piece of technology? Why does it work this way, right? And then through this exercise, it gets your brain juice going, and then you then become a good security practitioner. Right. It's not just about, I know 10 software, that makes me a better uh, practitioner. I, I, uh, let me quickly also give an analogy is on programming. Right? Uh, programming at the end of the day is a tool that you create a program for people to use it or to solve problems. Right? I, you know, it, what makes a good programmer is creating a good program. What doesn't make a good programmer, it, it doesn't make you a good programmer if you know all these different kind of 
uh, tricks or, or, or all these different kind of uh, APIs or new uh, sexy uh, logic flows and so on if you don't really fully understand that. Um, yeah, so uh, last question, uh, very quickly last question. I think Simon, you mentioned about age. I think uh, in cybersecurity, um, age is not affected at all. As long as you have the drive, you have the right attitude. Um, in, the, in this view, everyone is judged based on merits. And overall, it's quite a helpful industry. So um, we all know that we all have to struggle. And no matter what it is, we look at everyone's know-how and we try to share and help each other. Thank you. Uh, Simon, you're muted. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. thanks, Emil. Thanks for that response. Um, hey, Matthias, you also have been in the industry for many, many years, right? Um, you're working with Symantec, Blue Code, so and so forth. Yeah, would you agree with um, Emil said things like, oh, you must have a critical mind. You, know, you must be able to gel technical information, right? Technical skills and complement them or you know, put them together with soft skill communication so called to bring value to business. Would you think so? Um, of course, uh, Emil is so good looking, so definitely he, what he says is correct. <laughs> okay, but going back again, right? Uh, let me let me just give an example. Okay, I think we want to uh, be very real about matters. Like what Emil says is very important. What Dutch is also very true. Let's just talk about a, a policeman. I mean, if you ask, is the question does cyber security need to be technical? You are asking a. Uh, if I can throw the question at you uh, in the other way, right? It's like, does a policeman need to be muscular to be a policeman? The answer is of course not. But you must at least have fitness in how to catch teeth, right? So you don't need to be highly technical. But I felt that you must have the fundamental. If not, you cannot think the, the critical thinking of uh, how, how certain aspects work, like how, 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 to catch a, how to catch a criminal. You must know technologically how things work. So if you were to, uh, sometimes technical may, may be a problem also. So I, I, I mean, I'm now looking from another perspective. Being highly technical allows you to do very technical stuff like vulnerability research. But sometimes when you're too technical, right, you fail to see the human aspect. So Simon, cybersecurity is a very critical thinking thing. You have to pull yourself out, pull yourself in again. Now, I just throw a question to you. What is the most common way that organizations are being hacked? The problem is everyone of us know the answer is cybersecurity, but not the rest. 80% to 90% are all by phishing. Nothing to do with technical. Everything to do with how can I fool a person? So if I can say uh, in my years of cybersecurity, right, the hackers are trying to get into the mind of you. What is the biggest weakness you have? But if you're not technical, you only see the general part of it. You, you will fail to see what's the core issues. So there is a mix of skill. So I would say, you're right. There must be a flair. There's a nature of, if you're cybersecurity, you're someone, I mean, if I will talk about uh, the nature of people who want to go into this field, you are naturally inquisitive. You would like to question everything. You would like to break things. You know, like if I can talk about those school kids, right, who will play game. There are a group of people who will be playing game. But there'll be one or two who open the file and say, can I just change this value so that I can hire higher health point? Ah, these kind of people. <laughs> these are the people, right? High chance will be probing, will be asking, challenging the current status quo. They are, they have the flair. And even if you are not in a technical line, you may be a lawyer, you may be a, a, a chef, but because you will read, you will want to find out, you will want to dig. It makes you potentially have ability to do a job switch and a, a career, a career transformation. So if you ask me, we, we, when we do hiring, right? I mean, uh, ML, uh, myself, Dad, we, 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 we discuss also uh, about people that hire in the organization. Yes, we look at technical skills as a background, but not that highly capable technical skills, but we look at flair. We look at what the person do at a, on, a, on a daily basis. You know, do we go and read up on stuff? Do we go and find out things? But he go and break things for the fun of it. And these are, because you are, you know that if you don't break it now, the hackers will break it later. So you are breaking it to see if you are truly secure. So we need inquisitive mind and not people who are like very laid back, you know, and stuff like that. Maybe for those who are more, uh, 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 I use the late <laughs> but I will use that for those who are more uh, uh, systematic. They can they can choose to be an, a, I mean, they're accountant wise. Then maybe a different a different approach. But if you are more uh, inquisitive, uh, more more probing kind of person, maybe you are suitable for this skill. Yeah. Yeah, I I do agree with some of this um sharing. 
in fact, you know, um, I come across this quote, uh, you know, some wise guy used to say, oh, uh, uh, a lot of hackers actually hack human. You know, they go via the human, the weakest link, uh, right? Mm. And someone even said this, hey, cybersecurity actually is a human issue. <laughs> and what we're too, uh, for example, too quick to click, okay. Too fast yeah. to say, yes. Totally you know, agree. yeah, online, <laughs> things like that. Um, Let me to come back to Dutch. Yeah. Um, I guess there were some questions online to that talk about things that hey, I'm mid career, you know, I'm forties, fifties, um, yeah. So maybe I guess I'm trying to summarize those questions as in like I have some experiences, I have something, you know. Uh, I work in a couple of jobs. Now I'm interested to come into cybersecurity. Okay. Um, any suggestion? For example, they come to your company. I spring say, hey, I want to work for you, Dutch. You're such a nice looking guy. Employ me, please. So, um, how, what, what other experiences would catch our attention? In other words, okay, maybe I just uh, just do a quick one, right? I think uh, yeah. probably I just uh, mentioned it uh, previously, right? I just I'd like to stress this again: that no matter what you are, a new graduate or mid-career switch entrance, right? The most important aspect with is your attitude. So your attitude is like hundred percent. Okay, this is very very true. Okay. And you need to have a very open mind, a willingness to learn, a move out of your comfort zone because you're changing an industry, right? Although at the beginning, you might find it tough. There's always an S curve, okay? Be because of learning new things. Eventually, you will get it there. I believe that the same applies to, to going to change any industry. Like say, I'm going to health industry today. Okay, it's the same uh, thing. Allow me, allow me to... Uh, uh, ask something, jump in here. So you say that, um, hey, there's an S-curve, right? There's always a learning curve, right? Because you're switching industry. So am I correct to say that in other words, one of the uh, aptitude that you're looking for is willing to learn, able to be, you not know, to have perseverance, wow, hit a wall, got problem, but I'll still keep at it. Is that what you will, you will be looking for? Oh, well, maybe I just want to share a little bit of this experience that I have with okay. bring people, right? I, everybody will be nervous and stressed, right? But uh, at the right attitude will overcome all this, seriously, okay? Um, there's a few uh, government uh, human capital program available to help the mid-career people to change to their new industry, upskill, reskill themselves, okay? Just for my company per se, for high screen, right? We, have, uh, we, hire, we go through this uh, program from IMDA called the TESTA uh, Mid-Career Advanced Program. And the other one is quite interesting is a company led training program. In short, they call it CLT. Okay. So basically, it's a, it's, it's, it's a career switch. So we do design a framework that uh, has been curated by MDA, uh, especially in our company. So I think from the last two, three years, by budging on this program, right, we hire about 24 people. And from really that they are fresh grad or they are really want to, 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 to convert to, to a cyber, cyber security or even project uh, cyber security field. They want to, to, to join. So we go through this uh, program for about six months that we design. We, we train them. So don't get nervous, don't get stressed because every time you move to a new, 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 new zone or new area, you tend to be tense up. But Definitely, we are here to help. You know, it's not that straight away you come in, you need to program something. Straight away you come in, you need to set up the whole uh, network system and secure it. There's, there's no such thing. Like what uh, Matthias say, right? You need to keep fit, right? You want to be a policeman. Just you know, do your own running every day and then keep yourself fit and then just enroll into the to the to the to the to the police force, right? What you mentioned. So same thing as what in IT. That's what I want to uh, share with this ML or sharing. Read up. Start reading up. Get a spectrum of all what cybersecurity does. You don't know about this peripheral, that peripheral, how, how this thing mingling up in the computer world. Start that first. And then come in, get a proper framework, get a proper training, and build your confidence in this area. Thanks, thanks. In fact, it's very heartening to you know, hear from you, uh, uh, a local company, to say that, hey, look, we're not just looking at soft skill. No, we're willing to train. In a way, if I may summarize, I'm trying to say that we want you to succeed too. You know, when we get you on board, we want to succeed together. Thanks, thanks. Um, but that is, that is a very interesting question that I must ask you because I think you have some experience in this. Uh. Someone was asking, uh, hey, when you do forensic incident response, a lot of people work one eh. Um, what do you think? Okay, I think uh, that, that in every job, there's a fun part and there's always a systematic part. Uh, that, I won't say there's a lot, but there is 
a requirement for paperwork because when you do forensic, uh, the worst thing you can do is to destroy evidence. But the fun part is when you start finding out things, right? Because forensic or invest incident response comes when something happened. I tell you, okay, I, I can tell you stories like, after story. So there was company that was being breached, right? They asked him to come in. Then when you see how they get breached, it's terrible. <laughs> Sometimes we have to go and do investigation. We have to be very careful, you know, how we make sure that things are not tempered. Yet at the same time, we got to be very aggressive in because timeline is short. The moment you miss the timeline, right? Maybe some of the evidence are gone because hackers are still in. They could potentially wipe out and leave, the, I mean, uh, uh, leave their tra trail, uh, uh, clean all their trail. So I would say that uh, paper is still there. I, I think it's good that, uh, remember this, we, we, it's one thing that you do your work. It's another thing you need to translate your work to something that people can understand. Because if you, if you only do the fun part and you, I mean, I know that if you ask this question, you must be very excited about, hey, if that's an actor, you see that I would like to come in. Yes, you are the kind of people you're looking for. <laughs> so if you come in and you do all this stuff, you, but because you see, it's like, uh, our kids, I mean, I have kids who's doing his schoolwork. He can get to the answers, but the teacher must see his, 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 his process. Because without understanding the process, we cannot ascertain if things are evidentially happening that way. So yes, you're right. But there is certain paperwork you need to file. Uh, like for example, in the incident, uh, what happened? What's the root cause analysis? How do you intend to close it? And what's your lesson learned? So the, all these process right, need to be properly documented so that you can bring the organization to a proper closure of a particular issues. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like the part that you mentioned. Um, yeah, there's always need to be systematic. La. So mm. we look at it the other way around is also the way you picture it. La. Hey, um, there's technical part. And in a way like what um, Emil has mentioned, you also have this other big circle, right? The skills that translate the technical part into value, right? So documentation or, or some people is inevitable. La. That's one of the process to, to, to show their value, right? To, to fill it out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, um, you know, this week is International Women's Week. You know, um, lots of things we look at our social media, a um, lot of affirmation. I think that's great. Um, and one interesting question someone brought up is, hey, uh, why, why, why seems to have some uh, effort uh, to, to talk about gender, about women? I mean, what um, could I throw this question to you? Because since you're in Area Alpha doing training, you know, I'm just curious. Um, are such question being brought up um, to you, like, or, or put another way, yeah? uh, would there be ladies who walk up to you and say that, hey, cybersecurity for me or not? Sure or not? I thought it's a man's world, you know, you know that kind of thing. Okay, let's let's see how deep you want to get into this conversation. <laughs> um, two uh, minutes, two minutes, two minutes. Yeah, yeah. Let's not go into a. Uh, you know, debate until 3 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I uh, definitely can answer this question. I um I deal with this uh, or actually I I I am involved in this conversation quite a lot. Uh, not from not really from Ray Alpha perspective. In Ray Alpha, um, we are in a sense gender neutral, right? We we um yeah, we don't look at our training program, uh, our placement program, and so on. We don't look at whether you are male or female, right? Uh, everyone to us is equal, okay? Um, but I, I'm very involved in this more from a community angle. So on top of Ray Alpha, I also uh, involved in this community. It's a cybersecurity community called Difference Zero. Uh, it is a technical community of practice and there's like over close to about 3,000 of us. Um, but in terms of percentage of women, not a lot, right? And we do also have a women in cybersecurity initiative within the community. So that... Of course, then job is like, why do we need that, right? Yeah. Don't mind, I ask you, uh, um, approximately, you know, what is the percentage you see? Four part, uh, aga, you know? Aga, aga, okay. You talk about community, right? You talk about yeah. community. Oh, How so many like percent of ladies? How many oh, percent? 10, 15, about 10, 15%. 10, 15%? Uh? Okay, yeah. but Singapore population start, is half, half. Uh? But yeah. it started, correct. But it started, last time was 5%. Then slowly when we have this, oh. uh, when we have this initiative, then slowly we managed to mark up to 10%, 20%. Um, right. Right. For Red Alpha, actually for Red Alpha, we are quite proud uh, because for our training program, we actually about 14% women. Um, oh. So um, people who are enthusiastic and they want to join, you know, we don't, of course, there's no discrimination against that. Uh, and uh, tests and so on to en en enroll people is the same as well. So um, in that sense, it's very, I mean, it's, it's, it's evidence that, you know, women can succeed as well as men, right? Now, let's go back to some of the question about, I think it's an ecosystem uh, questions about, right, do, why do we need this women initiative? 
Um, at the end of the day, I think Simon, you mentioned it correctly, right? Um, general population should be half half 50 50, right? Why is there lesser women? Um, in some, I mean, that this actually goes back to cultural problem. Uh, this actually goes back, is, and it's not unique to Singapore, it's, it's uh, worldwide as well. I think when, when, uh, when uh, technology comes out, it's a very man dominated field. Can't we, I mean, we can't escape from that. I mean, that is that has always been the case. It could be historical reason because of science and because of education. It's only the last 50 years that humanities we we start to um we start to buck up in this area for women, more and more women to be involved. Um at the end, I mean, because of this um historical uh it's historical burden, I would say, right? Uh people have a misconception that hey, because this is a man's thing. Right. Therefore, uh, it's not intuitive. It's not uh, by nature that women, when they are in their teenagers, and that's usually when people start to think like what they want to do in life, that usually technology might not really come out, right? Because of the historical uh, burden. And slowly, actually, in the community, when we were trying to investigate this, uh, when we tried to uh, see, you know, investigate this issue, because for us, it's not a giant. It's actually not a gender diversity problem. To us, it's a missed opportunity problem then why are lesser women not considering cybersecurity? So is there any way we can put it in, uh, put them in interested in security? So then we realized that there are, there are all these historical burden. There are things like they don't feel safe because um, you know, some people don't feel safe that they, when they enter an event, who are 90% men? They don't know how to, how to uh, integrate in. So that slowly needs to have more and more initiative to like, hey, you know, this is not very true. I mean, yes, we have historical burden, but we need to slowly have some initiatives to slowly ease all this in and, and, and so on. So I would say, uh, if, I mean, uh, I would say it's if we look at it, continue to look at diversity as a diversity problem, I don't think it's true uh, that, you know, um, that women have their own set of thinking, men have their own set of thinking. I don't think that's true. I mean, if men and women, um, there are some people who are good at certain fields similar to the women uh, uh, populations as well. So all in all, I think all we, uh, for us uh, as, a, as professionals who are already in this field is how can we make the, the, the industry a uh, bit more friendly uh, and do not deter women from joining this industry. Thank you. Yeah, I also want to chip in here. Um, actually, this is the myth that I think we need to break. Uh, the myth that uh, cybersecurity favors men actually is not true. I mean, for some of my colleagues, right, some of my uh, CISO's friend, right, if you are a woman, you already uh, are one up already because cybersecurity is filled with men. We need, we, when, when it's a woman, we feel that well, it's precious. So we actually we give them more points, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, so the only reason was, I think, what, what Emil has mentioned is because it started with guys. That's why it's oversaturated with guys. And that's why female think that this is not for them. Actually, it's uh, not true. Many employees are looking for females to come into the mix because in every community or in every environment, right, you need to have a mix of gender before you can have a balanced discussion because men and women tend to think differently. And if they are trained in a certain same skill set, they see from different perspective and we need that. I think because we lack that seriously and therefore, whenever a female comes to an interview, right, uh, we, we tend to uh, give them more weight because we want them in. So I think this myth has to be broken. And in fact, uh, women are more celebrated because we need, they're, they're lacking, you know, in the Chinese they're saying, right, the, 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 when you slack, right, it's more expensive, you know, yeah. So I think I'll just add, add in on this. Yeah, yeah I, I, thanks, Matthias. Um, in fact, I like your part about, hey, we need a balance. You know, uh, we, we, a lot of times uh, people in cybersecurity all say, right, it's a team sport. It's never one person alone, right? Even if I'm the best cybersecurity guy around, but I couldn't be working 24 by 7 for one week, right? Yeah, so I still need to sleep or whatever. No, but, but you know, the, the whole cyber criminal out there, they, they, in a way, there's so many of them, they, in a way, they take turn to, to, to go and attack me. You know, there's no way uh, we do it alone. We need to do a team. So in a team, to be more balanced, um, definitely, uh, we need some diversity, la, right? Yeah. So, thank, thanks for that point. Uh, yeah, this is, seems to be a very exciting topic. Dash, you want anything to chip in from your end? Yeah, I think this uh, woman's thing stuff, right? I think as a society progress, right? We can see more women taking up these IT courses, and we are involving a lot of schools, right? Especially polytechnics, and joining the workforce in cybersecurity, I think it's picking up. But I think we, as a, I mean, from all of us here, I think we have some uh, national surveys or 
or contribute to some association, right? You can see in Singapore Association, right? I think we embrace a lot of uh, tech, well, women in tech. Just go to Google and do a search, right? We have profiling like 100 top 10 women in technology job, even in cybersecurity, even in schools itself, right? We give a lot of awareness and talk so that, you know, to embrace it. We, we, we really need uh, the women and the girls to come in and uh, I think it's a weak, equal play. I do have get some research, right? Talking about you know, women in tech, right? It's really more efficient, not just only men. Seriously, I, 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 I couldn't recall that the, the research paper. You say that women in tech and then the bring up bring the whole, 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 whole productivities and also the efficiencies that really uh, bring it up. So, so I think it's important for that to, to for, 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 for in the, I mean, women in the technology area. Yeah. So women, please welcome, just join in, fuck up and join us. Yeah. Yeah. I think so, uh, next, uh, Simon, uh, I think next part, right? I think for the panelists, right? You should invite all the women right? and attendees also. <laughs> oh, I will come in to ease the fear of uh, coming into the into the webinars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Actually, we did uh invite um uh Vivian uh, to join us, but I uh, know she can't make it. Yeah, so it's not intentional, by the way. Yeah, yeah. It's just that you know lunch time and uh, we are busy, so so she she couldn't join us. Yeah, yeah. So, so, um, yeah. So, thanks for those sharing. In fact, if we um take a step back and think about it in a way logically, right? Hey, Singapore is about population, uh, about fifty percent ladies and fifty percent guys, right? About that, right? But yet, if in a certain field, if it's a lot of guys, it means that we're uh, and we're short of people in cyber, short of talent, and this is a global problem, right? Not just Singapore. That means where there's this part is untapped, right? So, um, so from that angle, yeah, lah, can we, uh a bit of encouragement right so that we can fill those gaps you know because there are good jobs out here are good jobs out you know everywhere so i saw some of those questions asked hey where should we get started all this actually um i'm just thinking putting myself as um let's say i'm not in cyber security all right i just um say graduate or perhaps uh i, I was uh, in a, as an engineer or i was an accountant or whatever not hey you know i took a break because of covid blah 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 now i want to consider switching career um into cyber security I guess um, I'm trying to share with the um, attendees. One possible way is, for example, you go to LinkedIn or careers.gov.sg to get some of the jobs out there. There will definitely be some jobs that require more experience, right? But there'll be definitely some jobs that's more uh, for entrance. So, so that's one simple way to, to have a few, you know? Hey, what are the requirements now? What are people looking for? Yeah, and perhaps, um, I guess our panelists have shared that, hey, don't need to feel shy. Try apply or whatever, because actually we are not just looking at technical stuff. Like Dutch has shared, shared that about, hey, we're also looking at soft skill, right? You must be willing to learn, right? I may say that we treasure some of the skills able to translate some technical knowledge to business, right? Yeah, and also uh, Matai have shared also, right? Yeah, so um, yeah, in view of time, it's 1.11, 1 1.10, 1 um, you know, we have already extended by 15 minutes. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around. Um, obviously, we can't finish all the 20, 30 questions. Um, yeah, I'm so sorry about it. But let me go around. Um, perhaps ask all the panelists, starting from Dutch, then Emil and Matthias. Um, you know, perhaps if you ask one minute, uh, one minute, um, tell us, right, um, a summary, what would you encourage um, people who are interested to enter cyber? What is one thing you would tell them? Dutch, let's start with you. I think uh, not, not to fear and shy because the fear will really stop the advancement for things that in life, not, not only cybersecurity, and trust yourself that in the, you know you can advance. It's just simply as what uh, uh, Simon said, right? Just apply the job, just go go ahead, uh, come to IG, whatever that, you know, just send in your resume. It's, it's fine. Then people will really look at it. I just want to look at the standpoint of what from the employee, uh, employer perspective, right? I, I mean, I look through some resume that I want to go and I look through internship program as well and join them to look at the, their resume. Nothing to do with technical sometimes, but we really want to look at it. What is the attitude? Come on, we just interview you for first, second or third interview. Take three hours per se. I really can't tell how good are you. Basically, it's your presentation, your skill, and also to share about your passion and your attitude. And this is what I'm looking forward. So don't stop by fear. Just carry on. If you like cyber, we really welcome. And that's back to the woman just now, right? I think uh, women, you really have a very good advantage. I can see police force got more women coming in the army as well. And for us as a guy, right, our second generation PR or the, the Singaporean, we have two years left behind of you guys. 
Okay, so you have a better you know, opportunity in certain way, or or, or, or the runtime is, is 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 longer compared to us to join into the workforce. So combate and not to be fear. Yeah. Thanks, Dutch. Emil. Uh, thank you. Thank, thanks, Simon. Thanks, Dutch. Um, my one minute. Okay. Um, I'll say, um. To join the cybersecurity industry, uh, at the end of the day, you do still need some kind of credentials. Okay, um, but you have to think about it not from credentials for credentials sake. You have to think from an angle of what does this credential means. When I say mm -hmm. credential, I mean like certifications or things that you can show for. What does that mean to yourself? What does that mean to the organization? Okay, if you can't translate that, that's where you will find the difficulties of uh, of of getting a job uh, in, in this industry. So. As you progress through, you have to think about your overall training, your overall development, right? So to succeed, you need to think about both your personal and skills development, this continuous development of it. If you think you are driven and passionate, guess what? 10 out of 10 CVs will say that they are passionate of this industry and they're driven, right? You need, you need to be able to prove it, right? I can tell you that so many interviews I've been to, uh, I interview so many people say, oh, I'm passionate. I say, oh, that's great. Can you tell me something that we have done? 90% of people can't. They just say that, oh, I'm passionate, therefore I read about this uh, industry. You know? um, so, that is, um, so if you really are, you really want to get into this, you know, um, do something about it. Work hard and there'll be opportunities out there for you. Um, if you're really interested to join the service school industry, you can always reach out to people. You can always reach out to various different communities. Uh, but when you reach out, also be purposeful, right? What do you want to learn? Is, um, don't wait for the industry to spoon feed. Right, you need to know where you are at. What you know, what do you want to do? And uh, when you ask for advice, um, be more critical behind it. And uh, shameless pitch: uh, anyone interested uh, to get into cybersecurity, you can consider it Alpha. Uh, we train and we place our trainees uh, into industry as well. Thank you. Thanks, Abel. Uh, Matthias. Okay, so I'm the last one. Uh, keep my one minute. Uh, I think as a panelist, right, or maybe when CSA brought us here, we have to balance between two things. One, we want to encourage you, but two, we want to tell you the truth. So we want to encourage you by saying that it doesn't matter where you are, you can switch to a cybersecurity. But the truth of the matter is that cybersecurity is an ever-growing field. You got to read a lot. You are going to do a lot of research. You are going to study a lot. Sometimes even your own free time. So don't go to cybersecurity because it's lucrative. Oh, I got a lot of money. <laughs> Very good. But go to cybersecurity because you're passionate. Because when you're passionate, all these are not a burden. It's an enjoyment. You like to read, you want to find out, you know, when OCBC had this uh, issue, what you the first thing you want to read, uh, that is then, then that is your passion. Because if not, it's gonna be a struggle. When you go in, it will be a you, because you constantly need to read, you, know, you may be someone who just like to like to uh, have uh, uh, understand the history of things. Then that's different, your different scope. But if you are someone who like to find out more, like what Emil say, do things uh, even though nobody's watching, because just you're enjoying it. I tell you, cybersecurity will be a very exciting career. It even doesn't matter if your technical skills is not as highly as uh, the rest, but because of your desire, it will make you. Uh, better than the rest because of your driven, like what you need to be driven. Okay, so I think that's why I, I thought that maybe having an encouragement and a balance, uh, just uh, encouragement and truth, these two should come and you decide whether do you want to switch to a cybersecurity career. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was muted. Yeah. Thanks, Dash. Thanks, Emil. Thank you, Matthias. Yeah, I, I, you know, yeah, very, very resonate very well with what Matthias said. Um, we're here um to, to tell the truth, lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we don't want to just um come and say, hey, everything is rosy, everything is fantastic, right? So we just want to be authentic, right? We want to say that there are definitely um challenges, right? Especially if you're switch, switching field, but yeah, we also want to be authentic and share with you, um, so that um our attendees can make informed choices, right? Informed decisions. Yeah. So with that, I would like to thank you. And I would like to invite our attendees to fill in the feedback form, right? And from there, you can, uh, 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 for if necessary, some of the things we, if we need to get back to you, we will. We have also been um, uh, sharing in the chat various links, various resources, right? Yeah, Emil, as you said, he has uh, shamelessly um, 
you know, uh, talk about Alpha. So he has put a link there. I'm going to ask him to be more thick skin. Can you also share with us about your Div Zero link there? Uh, and if um, Dutch and Matthias are also, you know, uh, want to, you know, beat him in being more thick skin, uh, feel free to like type your email or your company's name there, etc. You know, <laughs> not because you want to, um, you know, try to sell this, not a product advertisement, but more because we, we from, the, from the questions we know, hey, people want sometimes more information, right? They want to bounce off more. They really feel a bit um, lost, right? So um, communities like Div Zero, right? Um, grounds up approach. I think some, some of this avenue can and can uh, help la. yeah people to to able to know better you know and we can help everybody. Ultimately to me um I like just to close you said um we cannot let the bad guys win. La. Right? Ultimately is this we cannot let the bad guys win. And that's why we are in cybersecurity. All right. 